Hello everyone, guitarist Chris Savichov here and please welcome to episode 11 of 251 ways to voice a 251. Alright, we're gonna continue episode 11 by harmonizing the fifth of our two chord. In this case this happens to be the note A, which we will position on our second string. And this is one of my uh, favorite ways to play a D minor chord when the fifth is on top in this position. <laughs> I'm spelling this voicing as an F, G, E, and A. Respectively, in our D minor harmony, F happens to be our flat third, G is the fourth or eleventh, E is our ninth, and A is our fifth. So we have a D minor 9 11 chord. Again, F is the flat third, G is the fourth or eleventh, E is our ninth, and A happens to be our fifth. When I go to the 5 chord, this is one of my favorite ways to voice it into a G7 by simply using a very basic G7 flat 9. This is a 1, 3, 7, 9 voicing. It's a piano voicing, basic voicing. It's spelled G, B, F, A flat. Again, G, B, F, A flat. Respectively, in the G7 harmony, G is the root, B is the third, F is the flat 7th, and A flat is our flat 9. So we have a G7 flat 9. To contrast this G7 with one more version of the 5 chord, I'm actually going to voice a G7 outer, G7 flat 13 sharp 9. In this particular position, this is how I like to voice this chord. I'm going to start with an E flat or D sharp, go to a B, then go to an F, and then finish with the A sharp or B flat. And harmonically, in our G7 harmony, then the D sharp or E flat happens to be the flat 13 or sharp 5, the B is our third, F is our flat 7th, and the A sharp or B flat happens to be our sharp 9. So again, we have a G7 flat 13 sharp 9, also referred as a G7 outer chord. So we have two G7s then. flat 9, sharp 9, flat 13, and I'm going to resolve this very basic C major 6-9 voicing. This is spelled as an E, B, D, and A. Respectively in the C major harmony, E happens to be our third, B is our major seventh, D is our ninth, and A is our six or thirteen. So this is C major 9 with a 13 or C major 6-9. If I play all voicing slowly, this is what we have. Here's our two chord, D minor, Going to a G7 flat 9, G7 sharp 9 flat 13, resolving to a C major 13. One more time, here's our D minor. Going to a G7 flat 9, G7 sharp 9 flat 13, and our C major 13. If I play all of this in time, this is how this would sound. For our second option of episode 11, we're going to play a more centralized two chord. This will be one of the easiest voicings we'll ever play. I'm sure many of you guys have played this. This is simply a bar going from the fifth all the way to the second string on the tenth fret. And this happens to be a basic D minor 11 chord. A lot of people use this also for a G suspended. Uh, in this case, we're going to use it as a D minor 11. Now, the voicing is spelled as a G, C, F, and A. Respectively, in the D minor 7 harmony, G happens to be our 4th or 11th, C is our flat 7th, F is our flat 3rd, and A happens to be our 5th. Now, when I resolve to a G7 in this position, I'm going to use this very cool voicing. It requires a bit of a stretch between the 2nd and 3rd finger, but it's a very cool way to play a G7 sharp 9 in this position of the guitar. Now, the way this is voiced, I'm voicing the G7 as an F, going to a B, then going to a G, and then finally moving to the A sharp or B flat, which happens to be the sharp 9. So in this voicing, I'm going to have F as the flat 7th of the chord, B as our 3rd, G as our root, and A sharp or B flat as our sharp 9. It's a very cool voice sitting from the minor chord 
I'm gonna contrast this G7 with a basic diminished shape, which is gonna function as a G7 flat 9 in this position. I'm voicing this as an A flat, D, F, and B. And again, you can see a basic G7 bar where the root has become the flat 9. This is a drop 2 voicing, it comes in the basic drop 2 root position for G7 and adding a flat 9 makes the root go half step higher, turning into an A flat diminished uh, voicing or G7 flat 9. And again, this voicing respectively in the G7 harmony, A flat, it's our flat 9, D is our 5th, F is our flat 7th, and B is the 3rd of the chord. If I put the two voicings together, I have the G7 sharp 9 going to the G7 flat 9. And again, the cool thing is that the melody note moves by half step. And in this position, I'm going to resolve to this very basic C major 7. Now I'm voicing this actually as an E minor, drop 2 voicing for an E minor in first inversion. This is an E minor over G, but it also functions as a C major 9. Now the notes of the voicing are G, followed by a D, followed by an E, and finishing with a B on the second string. Respectively, in our C major harmony, G happens to be the fifth, D happens to be our ninth, E happens to be our third, and B is our seventh. So a C major nine. Now, if I play all those voicings from option two slowly, we have this. We have a D minor 11, moving to a G7 sharp nine, G7 flat nine, and resolving to our C major nine. If I play all these voicings in time, this is what we'll hear. Now, for our third and last option for episode 11, I'm going to present to you one more way to voice D minor with A on top, on the second string. This is my favorite way to do so in this position. Minor. This particular D minor is spelled as an C, E, F, and A. A lot of close intervals. Now, in the D minor harmony, C happens to be our flat seventh, E is our ninth, F is our flat third, and back to the A, which happens to be our fifth. So it's a D minor nine chord. From here, there's a very cool G7 that's possible. I'm gonna play a B, F, and then E, and A flat. That's a G7 flat 9 with a 13. The good thing again, we have one of those instances where the fourth string has a higher note than the third string, even though uh, sequentially the fourth string is lower, of course. And so we have this kind of inner voice movement when you strum it or pluck it that's very cool and makes the voicing very vibrant. So in this particular situation, again, the voicing is spelled as a B, F, E, and A flat, and respectively in our G7 harmony, B happens to be our third, F happens to be our flat seventh, E happens to be the thirteenth or sixth, and A flat is our flat nine. I'm gonna contrast this G7 with another G7, and this happens to be another G7 sharp nine. It's a very cool voicing that's based on the same tritone. We still retain the same B and F, exactly as they were fingered in the previous voicing, but we move the E up to a G and the A flat up to a A sharp or B flat. So now this happens to be a G7 sharp nine. The voicing is spelled B, F, G, N, A sharp or B flat in the G7 harmony. B happens to be our third, F is the flat seventh, G is now your root and a sharp or B flat, your sharp nine. So the two voicings together. It's a very cool movement. And we're gonna finish with a very similar arrangement of the notes, but in a C major context. And this is the voice that we're gonna select. This particular C major voicing is voiced as a C, followed by a G, followed by an A, followed by a B. So we have two second intervals, G to A, a to B. So this is my C major. Now, respectively, C happens to be the root of the C major chord, G is the fifth, A is your sixth or thirteenth, and B is your major seventh. 
So if I play option three slowly, this is the voice since we end up with. Here's my D minor nine, followed by a G13 flat nine, G7 sharp nine, and C major 13. One more time, we start with a D minor nine, followed by a G13 flat nine, G7 sharp nine, and C major 13. If I play all of this in time, this is what we'll hear. Now that we have presented all three options, let's go one more time and go slowly through each one of them. So option number one started with this D minor seven chord, which moved to a G seven flat nine, followed by a G outer and resolved to this C major. One more time, we start with this D minor, we move to this G seven, contrast it with a G outer, and then we resolve to this C major voice. Option number two started with this very basic chordal voicing, is a D minor 11 that moved to this G7 sharp 9, G7 flat 9, and this C major 9. One more time, we start with this very basic D minor, just a bar, then we contrast it with this G7 sharp 9, G7 flat 9, and then we finish with this C major. And our third and last option started with this D minor, which moved to this G7 13 flat 9, G7 sharp 9 and with this C major 13 voicing. One more time, option 3, this D minor 9 chord, which moved to this G7 13 flat 9, G7 sharp 9, and finally this C major 13. So let me play all these three options in time and see how they sound. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing all of you again in episode number 12 and we'll continue our exploration this time by using the 6th or 13th of the 2 chord as our departing note on the 2nd string.